Hello, my name is Liu Mong, a junior student at the University of Macau. The paper I will present today is titled An Analysis of Development Opportunities and Challenges for China and ASEAN in the Post-Epidemic Era. This is the 23rd year since the One Bay Railway Initiative was proposed. In this decade, trade between China and the countries along the Bay and the Road continues to grow. And this year is also China's opening up after three years of the COVID-19 epidemic. The cooperation between China and Southeast Asia were also usual in a new situation. First of all, the three-year epidemic has posed a serious threat to the world economy as well as the Chinese economy. In addition to the impact of the epidemic, the restructuring of the global industrial chain led by the development, developed economics is also an important factor affecting China's economic development. The main strategic changes of the developed economy against China are to reduce their dependence on the Chinese economy. But due to the development of cross-border e-commerce, trade between China and the ASEAN has blocked the trade and changed the consumption pattern of overseas consumers. Lay the foundation for cooperation between China and the Southeast Asia after the outbreak. More importantly, in the first half of this year, after the United States and the Western countries imposed sanctions on Russia in many fields, one and more countries intend to abandon the dollar system. And the 42nd ASEAN summit this year, leaders expressed their commitment to promoting regional payments and facilitating local currency transactions. Although the dollarization does not make the exclusion of the dollar, it undoubtedly weakens the strong position of the dollar. Moreover, ASEAN countries have been exper uh, experimenting with using the yuan to central trade in certain products. Therefore, this move of ASEAN can be regarded as, as a good opportunity for RMB internationalization to some extent. This is one of the important points that distinguish this paper with other research. Next, when it comes to challenges, Apart from the cultural, politics, and the historical legacy of the ASEAN and China region, the one day rival strategy itself has been questioned. Among which the most widely known is the dead trap theory. That is to say, the powerful side lends money to weak countries and use debt to control the strategic locations, infrastructure, and the developing economy for their benefit. The term is most often associated with China. In recent years, there has been a lot of literature is, uh, demonstrating this problem. For example, Jin Gang and Shen Kuanrong, based on the difference in difference analysis, constated that the one bear one rule initiative has not significantly increased the problem investment in transportation. However, there is almost no research that uh, separately analyzes the data effect of the one bear one real policy on the ASEAN nations. Because this article is aimed at the analysis of Southeast Asian countries, it is not convincing to directly adopt the previous con conclusions from the researches about the countries about all the countries along the road. So this paper as well use the difference in difference methods to verify that this initiative does not cause a dead trap effect in Southeast Asian countries. Um, I don't think the data procession and the variable solution in this article are very new. The most, the most appropriate mode of trade or invest of each region and nation, um, and and also if national strength 
is definite is definitely different. So the odds and the magnitude of that exposure vary. My original intention was simply to refute the dead trap theory in the Southeast Asian region with more accurate data. Okay, the last part is about some cooperation areas. In the post-pandemic era, it is urgent to promote cooperation with uh, South, Southeast Asian. First, COVID-19 has undeniably transformed the structure of global business and with the advent of area of digital globalization, China should strengthen cooperation with ASEAN in the fields of digital economy, green technology, artificial intelligence, and blockchain. Secondly, the two sides have great potential for cooperation in sustainable development, such as wind energy, tidal energy, solar energy, and so on. Among countries along the one billion road, Southeast Asia has the highest efficiency in green energy utilization. Join hands to promote the green and sustainable development of the regional economy by increasing green infrastructure and cooperating the create more new energy products such as um electric vehicle and so on. China should also identify the energy security of South Southeast Asia countries in order to accurately target the distribution of renewable energy and carry out target project cooperation. Thirdly, Southeast Asian, uh, Southeast Asian countries has a certain production capacity in some electricity, uh, electronic com components, such as Hainan in electronic components, uh, semiconductors, and other films. While China has a complex electronic information industry layout, many businesses in China have international trading advantages such as 5G, the electrical and Internet of Things, cloud computing, and so on. China and uh, uh, Southeast, Southeast Asia can increase cooperation to improve the level of information and the digitalization of both sides. And at the same time, the penetration of digital economy and digital technology can also be deepened in every production process to promote the convenience and the intelligence of the inter of inter in international trade by um incorporation the digital platform into international logistic management. Okay, um that's that's all of my paper and that's all of my presentation. Thank you.